Okay, the very first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the caulking that we use. We use what's called the Chemtron. I don't know if it's the same all over the world, but it's the same stuff, okay? It's a metal sealant, it's a acoustical sealant, okay? It's water resistant and it's black, okay? We use it on the bottom of our track when we're installing walls and we use it with the poly and the vapor barrier when we're doing, when we're doing that stuff, okay? Uh, it's really, really sticky, gooey stuff, so be careful when you're applying it and your journeyman will show you the trick so you don't, don't get it all over yourself. The PL here is for residential guys. I don't use this very much at all in commercial. Uh, this is strictly for residential, for gluing the drywall onto wood studs, okay? So that the tapers don't have to taper uh, field screws, which is really, really nice. Both of these go in the applicator, which is a large applicator. You'll notice that it'll fit, okay? So the right size. There'll be different sizes of applicators and uh, different sizes of caulking. We use the big ones most of the time. I don't, I don't think I ever use the little one for anything. This is the poly or vapor barrier, what we call the poly or vapor barrier. It comes in different sizes and it folds out, right? So the actual size that you measure here is not going to be correct. So make sure you got the right stuff. And if there's multiple different sizes on site, then ask somebody, okay, what size to cut. So you have the right size, okay? The, the, the poly, the tuck tape and the chemtron all work in it together. This is more of a weatherproofing seal and this is a fire seal. Uh, the fire seal can also be applied by fire stop guys in the field. Uh, the Hilti stuff is the most popular that I've seen. We call these sausages. Okay, so these sausages go in their own type of applicator, a different type which I don't have on me, but they do not go into that gun. This is the tuck tape. The red tape is what we call tuck tape. And we use that with poly, okay, the vapor barrier. When we're cutting seams and we have, we have to join things or tape it around windows, this is what is the tuck tape. So if your journeyman asks you to go get the tuck tape or use tuck tape, then this is the stuff. We use it to tape around boxes when we cut them out of poly and uh, it's really sticky stuff. Do not use your teeth to bite this, okay? Use uh, your knife or something else sharp to, to cut this. Do not use your teeth, otherwise it'll build up all over. It's disgusting. <clears throat> this is the foam gasket. Now the foam gasket will go on the bottom of the track, okay? When we're doing bottom track. This is the six inch bottom track. You can tell it's shallow, right? It's very shallow. Uh, so it'll go underneath it, just like that. Okay, now when you're using the gasket, you don't have to use the caulking, the black caulking, like I said, okay? Uh, but if you're not using the gasket, use the caulking, okay? It's simple as that. So yeah, this is the foam gasket. It also comes in different sizes. So make sure you're using the right size, the right, uh, with the right size of track. Okay, well, now that while we're on studs, okay? Uh, steel stud, this is the track, okay? The bottom track, you can tell that it's the, it's the shallower track, is always the stuff on the bottom. The most popular type of top track, or slip track, or slotted track, is the slip track, right? It's this top track, okay? So if they're looking for slip track, slotted track, this is the stuff you're looking for. It's much, much deeper, and it's also built for deflection, which I'll explain in a moment. There's another type of uh, top track, which is this deep stuff, okay? Now, it's so deep because we allow for deflection in our walls, okay? So that, uh, say there's a three quarters of an inch deflection, you, you'll measure your studs tight into the bottom track to the top track, and then minus three quarters of an inch, right? So it's nice and tall so that uh, it all will, you know, it'll hold the deflection. Now the studs themselves, there's different kinds of studs as well. This would be a normal 20 gauge stud. Okay, it has the knockouts here. The circles will always go at the bottom and it looks like almost like an arrow pointing up in a, in a sense, right? These are the two foot knockouts for channel, for well, like electrical, things like that. It so simply slips into the bottom trap, like so, boom. Right? And the top track, same thing. Okay? <laughs> Alright, I can do 
it's kind of upside down, but it'll, uh, if you can see, right, when we put it in, it's, it's a little looser, okay? But yeah, you'll leave deflection in it like that. And a lot of times you'll have to take the screws out as well. Now there's other types of stud, right? So that was like a normal 20 gauge stud. Now this right here, this bad boy, is a structural stud. It's a lot thicker of a flange, right? This is the flange of the stud. The, the way the studs go is, this is the, the front, okay? The hard side, and then this is what we call the soft side, the back side of the stud. The hard side is always facing the way that you draw your tape from for your centers, okay? So this is, gives you the direction the drywall is supposed to go. So when the, when the stud's facing this way, that means the drywall goes that way, right? And vice versa, the drywall goes that way, okay? So it's really, really easy to understand, okay? Hard side, soft side, and then, you know, this is always pointing in the direction that you've drawn your center from, okay? That structural stud has a much wider flange than the regular, two, uh, regular 20 gauge stud. And then they have wind load studs, which are even bigger, right? So when you're getting your steel, they're all color coordinated as well. You can see this right here, this yellow is coordinated for, this is the 18 gauge st steel stud or 16 gauge. Um, anyways, I can remember, but, so it's all, it's all coordinated by color. So make sure you, you know what gauge of steel your journey person is looking for, okay? So you got the right stuff. Because you don't want to be cutting heavier gauge stuff for lighter gauge walls, okay? Because it gets expensive. And a lot of the times when they've ordered structural studs or wind load studs, they have an exact amount, okay? So make sure you, that if there's a variety of stud that you ask somebody which is the one they want. Studs are, this way that stud, this is a three and five eight stud, by the way. Uh, it's like a normal two by four uh, wall. But the three and five eight stud and the six inch studs are probably the two most common studs that we use. Now these knockouts are every two feet. So you always know the bottom is the very first where the two feet is, okay? And these are nice because the circles are here and they have these knockouts which you know are pointing up, okay? But it's not always the case. Sometimes they're just oval circles. Sometimes they're just circles, like ovals, okay? And you don't know which is top and bottom. Simply draw your tape and find two feet to, to the center of the mark and you know you're good, okay? So two, four, six. So when you're cutting the stud, always cut from the bottom. So you draw your tape from the bottom, okay? And cut the tops off, okay? You don't cut the bottoms off. You always cut the tops so that the, the knockouts always line up for the wall channel and the other stuff, okay? So we put channel for the walls. This is a smaller piece, of course, but this channel usually goes at uh, like four and eight and, you know, every four feet to hold the insulation in. Okay, and this also is called the stiffening bar. The U-bar channel stiffening bar, it, because when it's knocked down, it stiffens the wall so the studs don't turn, right? Which is really nice when you're drywall. Sometimes you'll have to put clips and screw them all in so that it doesn't go anywhere. It's really, really, it's really nice stuff. But yeah, always cut the top of the studs off. Now, if you're doing, say, a door header, for example, you're going to want to measure from the bottom of the header up to the knockout of the door stud so that you can measure down to the mark and then up, if you know what I mean. So the channel still goes through the door studs, the header studs. <laughs> now, this is the hat channel, furring bar, or whatever you want to call it. This stuff here is pretty common for ceilings and for furring out walls and things like that, okay? Uh, it's pretty easy to remember. It's hat channel, furring bar. It, it, this is what this is, okay? It's seven eighths thick. It's always seven eighths thick uh, this way. And um, it's pretty, and it comes also in different gauges. All of this steel comes in different gauges. I just wanted to show you the inch and five eighths really quick because we do use inch and five eighths. Now the top and bottom track of inch and five eighths is always the same. It's uh, it's a little bit thicker, okay? 
the inch and five eight stud is a smaller stud, so it just it just needs a little bit of a thicker thing, you know, to stay square in there nicely, right? So I just wanted to show you that. This is a light gauge, 25 gauge. Uh, you can tell the 25 gauge, you can you can bend the flanges in with your hands. Okay, you're not going to be able to do that with the 20 gauge, okay, or the 16 gauge. But the, the colors of the studs, there's white, orange, and red that I'm familiar with. Um, green, sorry, green, red, orange, and white. What I'll do is I'll link them in the descriptions what the gauges are. I'll look them up after because I can't remember off the top of my head. <coughs> the angle. This is big angle. And this is small angle. Okay, so again, we have 20 gauge angle, and this is big two inch. And then we have the regular inch and a half. <coughs> okay, angle, which is a lighter gauge, 25 gauge. You can bend it also with your hand. Okay, so this is angle. We use angle to make ceilings, like do around the perimeter. We use angle to box things out. Uh, angle for clips to put in the doors. We use angle for absolutely everything. Okay, so it's good stuff to have. This bigger stuff is not very common, but I just wanted to show you that it also comes to different sizes. So uh, you might want to ask what size, if there's different, multiple sizes on the side. Okay. okay, door clips. These are what door clips are, okay? Now they'll be set for the proper size of the door. Uh, you just need to ask what size of clip, but this is what a door clip looks like, right? So I normally cut these tabs off. If you haven't seen my how to install a door video, I can click link it here as well. And that'll explain more about door clips. And the tie wire. This is tie wire. We use tie wire for safety, basically. We use it to tie, uh, to, to tag our scaffoldings, to use as like a, like a safety precaution for like pins and scaffolding, things like that. Tie wire, we don't really use other than for safety. Okay, so, but this is what tie wire is. It's very common to have. Okay. Okay, insulation. Insulation goes by R value. So R20, the bags will always be labeled. The R20, you can see the big R20, is for six inch walls. All right, so R20 here is for six inch walls. Now this white stuff here is the like the bat insulation, okay? We use bat or semi-rigid, which is rock so It's like green color and it's a lot more rigid, okay? So if you're looking for the right size, whew, we, so when you're looking for insulation, make sure you know what size of wall you're building uh, or if your journey person hasn't specified what, you, what he needs, ask him, okay? Because so there'll be R20 for six inch walls, there's R12 uh, for three and five eighths and so on, okay? So make sure you've got the right, uh, R value for the wall that you're doing because it won't fit properly <laughs> otherwise, right? Um, and if you haven't seen my video on insulating, I'll also link that to in the notes. So last thing but not least that I'm going to talk about quickly is drywall. I don't have drywall here, but I do have a video that I'll be, I'll be phasing in and out while I'm talking about it here. The basic thing to know is the Type X 5 8 is usually a red tab like this. Okay, so when you're looking for a 5 8 Type X, which is fire rated, uh, then you want to look for a red tab like that. <laughs> the half inch will be blue. Okay, the half inch will be a blue tab. Now you can notice that the, the size of drywall, it will usually be on, on the tap, okay? We also use an aqua board. It's green, it's really not hard to miss. And uh, yeah, you'll, be, you'll find that no problem. Uh, so yeah, the green board is a mold resistant board. It's an aqua board. We, we also use a uh, cement board, which is, uh, looks, it's gray, it looks like cement. There's uh, type C for ceilings. Uh, the ceiling board is a lot heavier. Uh, there's also abuse board that we'll use. But the most common types you'll be using is the 5 8 Type X and that regular half inch. 
That's all I have for you today on steel studded drywall materials. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to leave them down in the comments because I'll get back to everybody. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, YouTube thinks you might like this video right here, so give it a watch. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Chris. Bye for now.